So when I first got into this hobby, I kept hearing people talking about dynamic range and the histogram all the time, but I had no idea what they were until much, much, much later. So today I want to go through what the dynamic range is and what the histogram is used for. Welcome back Beardos and again today I'm going to talk about dynamic range of the histogram but to really get into that let's first talk about how camera sensors work because you need to understand how those camera sensors work for you to understand how that affects the dynamic range of your camera and how that eventually will affect the histogram. These days if you're talking about astrophotography or amateur astrophotography you're likely using a CMOS camera. Uh, back a few years ago, there was a big kind of debate on whether CMOS was going to actually overtake uh, CCD. And I would say, as of today, CMOS has kind of taken over. And the reason for that is it's, they're much cheaper to, uh, to build. So most of the amateur astrophotography cameras that are coming out are uh, CMOS cameras. Either way, from a high level, CMOS and CCD cameras work the same way. They work based on the principle of the photoelectric effect. So what is the photoelectric effect? Well, the photoelectric effect principle basically states that when electromagnetic radiation, such as light, hits uh, a material, like a metal, it will emit electrons. And that principle is used to convert light into a voltage, and then the voltage is then recorded as data in your file. So again, it's not this simple, but I want you to think of it this way. Light will hit the photo sensor on your camera uh, and you'll, you'll be using some exposure. And imagine that you're kind of like storing up that, uh, that voltage. And once you wanna take the exposure, so like say, let's say you're doing a five minute exposure. So after five minutes, you're going to release that energy. And then you're going to measure how much voltage passed through. Once you measure that voltage, what that's going to tell you is how intense the light was. So there's a um, relationship between the intensity of the light. So imagine like the more photons that are going to hit that cell, the more electrons that are going to be emitted. And that means that there's going to be a higher voltage. So you can test the intensity of that light uh, based on that. So just keep that in mind as we go through dynamic range and the histogram later. So the second thing that you have to keep in mind when you think about cameras is that the sensor itself is broken up into an array. So it's a, it's a square, it's a two dimensional array of pixels. Uh, and in fact, if you buy any camera, it'll tell you the sensor size. And that sensor size actually does make a difference. I'll talk about it in a later video, but it does make a difference in the field of view that you'll have. So it can make objects similar to what we, when we talked about focal length, it can make objects actually seem bigger or smaller depending on that field of view. However, um, for our purposes for today, we're just gonna worry about the fact that it's broken up into pixels, into these small areas. And these small areas, these pixels are going to be what records the intensity of the light that hit that pixel. So you think about it, it's like the smallest indivisible uh, square on your camera sensor that can be recorded. This is also uh, important to, uh, again for a later video we'll talk about it, the size of the pixel actually will make a difference in the uh, field of view calculation as you see um, things can look, can look, appear magnified or uh, not magnified, depending on the size of the pixels as well. All right, so we talked very high level about camera sensors and how they work. Now let's talk about dynamic range. So what is the dynamic range? Dynamic range is very simple. It's when you measure the voltage, you have to record some value from that pixel. And the dynamic range is basically the range of values that that pixel can take. If you think about a dynamic range of zero to X, for example, where X is kind of like the upper limit that you can record for the value of that pixel. And zero is kind of the lower limit where zero is completely black and X is completely white. If you have, um, if you can only take two values, for example, black or white, then your image is gonna look a certain way. Each pixel will either be completely black or completely white, right? But for you to bring out the details you need to have a higher range than that. So every single camera that, that is being sold right now has a certain 
uh, bit depth. And that bit depth basically tells you what the dynamic range of that camera is. So for example, I have an ASI 1600mm monochrome camera. Okay, and that camera is a 12-bit camera. So that means that when the reading comes out of the sensor, uh, it can take on a value from 0 to 2 to the 12th. So from 0 to 4096 um, uh, values. So the pixel will be recorded between that range. Now, what happens on the ASI 1600mm is in software, in the driver, will actually get upsampled to a 16-bit image. So you still end up with a 16-bit image. It's just upsampled. Um, so you, th there's cameras out there that have higher, uh, a higher bit, uh, bit depth than that, higher dynamic range than that, uh, which means that they can, each pixel can record much more fine details than, than that particular camera. So my other camera, the ASI 2600 uh, MC Pro, is a, 16, is a true 16-bit camera. And what that means is its dynamic range is going to be between 0 and 2 to the 16th, which is 65,536. So a pixel at, uh, that is reporting no light hit it will be at zero. And a pixel that has, uh, you know, had like the, the full well uh, filled up will be at 65,536, like pure white, basically. If you think about it, your stars, which are going to be the brightest things in there, are going to be closer to the 65,000 part. And the background is going to be closer to zero now they won't be at zero and they won't be at 65,000 but they'll be on that end of the range and that's the dynamic range that's basically what that means it means what your uh, camera the range of values that each pixel can handle now why is this important this is super important because the higher your dynamic range the more that you'll see faint structures so if you're taking images of like some very faint nebulae for example uh let's say the spaghetti nebula which has a lot of like very fine detailed structures inside of it the higher your dynamic range the more you're going to be able to bring out those um those structures if you're taking images of something like the north american nebula which has structures but they're not so like well defined you don't necessarily need that high of a dynamic range. So it really depends on the object that you're trying to like really focus on. The ASI 1600mm, for example, that is a fantastic camera. I'll put a picture up of the uh, Western Veil Nebula. Even though it's a 12-bit camera, uh, because it has some other advantages, it just produces such amazing images. It's not all dynamic range, but dynamic range really, really will help you to define the structures that you want to bring out from from the image and you can see it very easily uh, here what we can see is two gradients one is an 8-bit gradient and one is a 16-bit gradient I actually produced them from the exact same image uh, I just stretched them uh, while one was in 8-bit mode and one was in 16-bit mode and you can see the difference in the range between the two um, so you can produce much much more fine details when you have that higher bit depth. So most of the cameras that I know that are coming out right now are coming out the, uh, at 16 bits, so the ASI 2600 um, uh, MC. By the way, I know mostly um, the ZWO cameras. Um, the QHY cameras will actually use, um, I believe they use the same sensors on a lot of their cameras as well. But either way, a lot of, a lot of the cameras out there are, that are coming out right now on the higher end of the range are 16 bit cameras. I uh, haven't seen any that are higher than that. If you know of any, definitely comment uh, below. Uh, I would really appreciate it. Actually, I just want just to learn myself. Um, some of the mid-range cameras, they're going to be like 12-bit cameras. So the example, the ASI 1600mm, uh, uh, that's the one that the monochrome camera that I use, which produces amazing results, amazing results. Um, you can see them on my Astrobin. I'll put a link in the description. And like the 183 uh, the 183, both QHY, I believe, makes a 183, and ZWO makes a 183. Both of those cameras are 12-bit uh, cameras, and they, uh, they'll they get upsampled to 16-bit. So the images that you'll get in, on your computer that you'll work with are 16-bit uh, are images, but the sensor itself, the um, ADC, is... Uh, is 12 bits and so that's that's basically what dynamic range is just think of it this way the higher the bit depth, depth of the camera the more details that you're going to get the higher the dynamic range the more details that you're going to get 
and the dynamic range affects the histogram it affects the way that you look at your exposure so let's talk about the histogram next the histogram is a super important tool when you're taking subframes and when you're uh, stacking your images and and finding the final results so make sure you kind of like understand how to use the histogram while while you're taking subframes so the histogram is related to the dynamic range the histogram is basically a plot of where the majority of your light is where the majority of the exposure is and think of it like the x-axis is your dynamic range and the y-axis is how many pixels in your image are in that particular area if you, if you think of the x-axis going from zero let's say you have a 16-bit camera so it's from zero to 65,536 uh, as of as values then if the majority of your pixels are showing off to the uh, are showing up in the right hand side of the histogram that means the majority of the uh, pixels in your image are showing up closer to the white area right and if the majority of the pixels are showing up all the way to the left hand side so closer to zero that means the majority of your pixels are very dim or very uh, very uh, dark what does that mean so in astrophotography most of the time you're actually going to be off and to the left and the reason is you're taking images of very very faint objects that's why you have to take so many exposures that's why you have to worry about that but if you're overexposing so for example if your gain is too high or if you're using a DSLR and, and your ISO is too high you might be way overexposing the object and there are some objects that are very bright so for example the Orion Nebula the Orion Nebula is a very bright object in the sky and it's very easy to overexpose and so you want to be looking at the histogram to determine now Orion Nebula is probably a bad example right because it's very bright but you want to look at that histogram to determine like are you over or under exposing your image and if you see that you're you know way too far off to the right then you might want to back off the gain you might want to lower the exposure time that you have on it and similarly but if you're too far off to the right so if you have a, a histogram where um, the histogram will take a this like natural looking bell curve you know it might be super narrow and most of the time in uh, astrophotography you'll see a very narrow um, bell curve but it will still look like a bell curve when you zoom in especially um, if you see it off into the into the left where you're only seeing like half of the bell curve what that means is you've clipped your image that means that there are pixels that you are not that you're not picking up there's there's light that you're not picking up because you're underexposing your image and if it's all the way to the right and you're clipping it there that means you've just way overexposed your image and like I said like my typical typically what I'll look for is to see am I seeing my images on the left hand side and usually in the so if, you, if I'll break up the histogram into four quadrants and I'll want it in the in the first quadrant but I won't want it clipped off uh, what that means for me is that I can collect more exposures um, and I can uh, I can you know make sure that I, I didn't overexpose or underexpose my my image a lot of times too there's there's images that I've I've taken so for example right now I'm imaging the uh, the spaghetti nebula uh, and the O3 you just can't see anything in the single sub there's nothing you can see but the histogram becomes the tool that we use to see if I'm taking it, the correct image so that when I go to stack them that I can see the structures so the histogram is a really important tool that you that you need to learn um, and it took me a very long time to, to uh, learn how to use it uh, and you use it in both situations you use it both when you're collecting subs and you also use it when you're um, doing your post-processing how do you use it when you're doing post-processing so in post-processing what you're doing is when you're stretching the image 
you're really shifting the upper and lower limits of the uh, of the bell curve. That's what stretching basically is 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 doing. So when you're doing curves and you're doing stretching and you're doing those things, what you're doing is you're modifying the um, the 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 curves and you're stretching the the you're stretching the um, the exposure out into your histogram, and you actually see that. Additionally, when you're taking color images, uh, you'll notice in uh, in Photoshop or any of the tools that the you'll have a single histogram, but you'll see a separate value for each of the uh, each of the colors. And typically, the reason the reason for that is that each of each of the colors will have its own histogram. So red will have its own, green will have its own, and uh, blue will have its own histogram. And you can actually stretch those things individually. So a lot of times, if you want to bring up uh, your blue light or your red light, um, you'll stretch those separately. So what did we learn today? Today we learned about the camera sensors and how the camera sensor and the dynamic range are related to each other. And we also learned about how the dynamic range and the, uh, the histogram are related to each other. The histogram is the tool that you really want to master if you want to take good subs and you don't want to throw away a lot of your data. So the more you know how to use these tools, the better images that you're going to take. And like I always say, once you know these fundamental techniques uh, and these fundamental tools, it makes the whole hobby easier for you. So definitely uh, take some time to learn the histogram and learn about the histogram and how it works. And I will see you guys next time. Again, if you really like these videos and you want to be up to speed when I release new ones, definitely hit the subscribe button. And I'll see you guys next time.